Okay, Boker Tov. We are 24, give or take, hours late, and it's freezing over here. As I usually play the guessing game, uh, maybe you could guess where I am, but at first I'm going to make a bracha, a blessing. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the um, you know, I apologize for not giving class. I think it's the first time, maybe not the first time, uh, maybe the first time if there's not a Jewish holiday or something like that, that I did not end up have a chance to give the class Sunday because I was traveling and I just didn't have the right spot to stop and even give a short class. So uh, we're giving the class today because we don't want to not share words of Torah. It might be a little shorter because I am freezing. As you can see, I am <laughs> trying to warm up with these words of Torah. Okay, first let's say a bracha. Baruch ata Adonai Eleinu Melech Olam Shehakol Niya this coffee is going to freeze before I get to drink it. So, <clears throat> I want to share a thought, and I hope I will uh, convey this, because it's a, a bit of a sensitive subject, but an important subject. You know, you have to, in today's world especially, you have to be careful with all the sensitivity. I even want to express this in a sensitive way. With all the hypersensitivity that people have, you have to be careful how you express a, a subject um, so <clears throat> the parsha that with the parshiot, the portions that we're reading this week, is are the portions of the giving uh, of the of the plagues of the Jews in Egypt, the, the Exodus, and so on. These are the portions that we're reading this week. Now, I want to um, focus in on one verse. I want to focus in on something that I saw uh, last week. I opened up Twitter uh, just to find out what's going on a little bit in this world. And uh, that's one of the places you might go. I actually do try to uh, to diversify, you know, where where I get the the information from. And uh, so I saw something <clears throat> that, um, you know, as usual, got people from all sides of the spectrum to comment. And I will explain. But first, let's start with the Torah. Then we'll go to the story. Then we'll go back to the sort of lesson as I see it. Um, and that is that, I'm going to assume you all know the basic story of the Exodus. We all have had the Passover Seder, and we will read there about the Israelites being in, in Egypt, the Jews being in Egypt, and then um, God sending Moses to warn Pharaoh to let my people go, and Pharaoh does not comply. And uh, what ends up happening is that that God sends the ten plagues. Now, one of the plagues is the plague of Arov, the mixed, the mixed animals, the mixture of animals that God sent to um, <clears throat> to uh, smite the Egyptians. And when God sends the mixture of animals, right, all the different animals, uh, wild animals, uh, over there, the verse, the Torah says, "V'samti fdus bein ami," that I will make a separation between my people and the Egyptians, and my people will not feel, not uh, be smitten by the plague, which seems kind of obvious. I mean, obviously the objective of the plagues was to smite the Egyptians. Why would the Torah even need to tell us that the Jewish people were not, uh, <clears throat> were not affected by the plague? Seemingly unnecessary. So, the <clears throat> Rashi, the, the Or HaChaim, the famous Or HaChaim HaKadosh says that the verse comes to add and to tell us that even while not only was a Jew not affected by the plague of the Orov, of the mixed mixture of wild animals, not only was he not affected if he stayed in Goshen, but even if a uh, <clears throat> one of the Israelites went to uh, and 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 hung out sort of amongst the Egyptians, even under those circumstances, he would be protected. He was not affected by the plague. This is what Orachim says. And I want to then, I want to, I'm going to come back to this, but I want to share again a story that I saw last week. I do play like to play the guessing game. Where am I now? Let's see how good you are about <laughs> geography. You know, this week, some of you might be aware, this week is what they call uh, Yeshivacation week 
which is that many, many of the schools throughout the United States of America take off this week rather than the end of December, and it becomes a week of uh, vacation where you take your kids. So um, we are here spending some time with our kinalach, and it is quite cold. Anyway, l'chaim. So I open up my Twitter account, and I want to say that I do have, and you're welcome to follow me on Twitter, I do have sort of a mix. I, I, I really do make sure to try to have, you know, different, um, both whether it's political, ideological, uh, or, or, you know, science, uh, just a, a wide range of, uh, of different, whether it's news outlets or individuals, uh, websites that I follow, and, uh, you know, just to make life interesting, and it's, it's, it's always good to get, you know, different sides so, so that you could then be a little more educated rather than sort of be radicalized in your own think, thinking. You could get other opinions if they're worth listening to, agree or disagree, but people who are, you know, have, uh, have a little seichel, as you would say in Yiddish slash Hebrew. And, um, so I open up the account and there's controversy, you know, a couple of million, you know, I don't know, a million point something views. What's the controversy? A guy was wearing a shirt and the shirt said, you know, I think love, uh, love, uh, JC, love Jesus. The guy said, love JC. And, um, and, uh, <sighs> And he's being escorted out of a mall somewhere in the United States. I don't remember, you know, which, which city this was in. And there's a, there's an uproar. Someone posts, you know, this video saying, look, a guy can't even here in the United States of America, you know, openly practice his religion is being escorted out of the mall. Now, at first glance, you know, that's a little sort of outrageous. Why can't I wear a shirt that expresses my religion and, and, Leave me alone. Why am I being thrown out? And this is where it just, it just sort of irks me. It irks me in the fact that people love to share a half a story just to, to dramatize, you know, and, and underscore their narrative. Meaning then you scroll down on many people's response and someone shows the other, the back of this fellow's shirt. Now you still might be of the opinion that this fellow should not be, should not have been escorted outside of the mall, but do not show me half a story. Let me make that decision. Understand? Be honest. This honesty in, in sharing is not only when you say something that's not true, but it's also if you, you, of course, share a half a story and it doesn't give you the full picture. And that's simple. I, I'm sure we all understand that. That's, that's not that complicated. So the, the issue over here was the back of this fellow's shirt said the following, only, only uh, JC can save you, okay? And um, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. It's just the way I was brought up religiously, you know, that's the way we uh, identify, you know, Christianity and so on. And again, no intent to be disrespectful. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> but then, you know, the famous symbol of coexist, coexist, which is, you know, the symbol of all the religions, and there's a big sort of X sort of line, a line across saying, you know, like <coughs> against coexist, and you could only be saved if you believe in, in Christianity. And that was the other half of the back of his shirt, which many apparently found offensive. And that's why the security guard was escorting him out of the, the mall. Now, <clears throat> you could over here make the argument in both directions, whether they should or should have not thrown him out of the mall. You know, it's a private property. What happens if somebody's walking around? with a obscene shirt? What happens if somebody's walking around with an immodest shirt? <clears throat> Do they have the right? What happens if somebody's walking around in a sort of religious conservative neighborhood and they're wearing a pride shirt? All these uh, are, 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 are questions, you know, is, is a person allowed to express himself on private property? The point over here is you could go in either direction. I'm not going to issue an opinion over here 
because it's not necessary for me to issue an opinion here, nor will any will it make any difference. I'm here to sh- teach you some Torah. You are welcome to share your opinion. You could you could post there as a comment by all means, as long as it's done respectfully. Um, <clears throat> but don't show me a half a story. Do not show me a half a story. Show me a full story, and then we can have an honest conversation. Moving on, because that's not the objective of this class, the symbol of coexist, okay? And here there's an X going right through the coexist. Basically, you know, it's not going to help you. You got to believe in my religion or you're doomed. You will not be saved. Everybody, I guess, is entitled to believe what they are. It's a free country. Um, You could believe what you want. Um, you could, uh, believe what you want. However, I want to, I want to, I want to express this idea and going back to our Parsha. The Parsha says that Hashem, God, has made, will make a separation between the Israelites and the Egyptians as he brings upon them the plague of the Arov, the animals, the wild animals, the wild beasts, and coexist. And an arrow going through coexist. We had a bar mitzvah this Shabbos at the synagogue, and this is what I shared. I shared that the message over here, especially as the Orachim says, so that even if a, a Israelite, a Jew, in, uh, is, finds himself amongst the Egyptians, he was not affected by the plague because God provided that separation. <clears throat> Today, in today's day and age, we live in a time where it is almost impossible to be sort of totally secluded, protected from um, other ways of thinking, be it positive, be it negative, be it in uh, the, be it uh, uh, in line, be it sort of a positive influence of how you want both yourself and your children raised, uh, um, raised or not. And there's limited control to what we can do um, about that as parents or for ourselves. And therefore, the Orachayim is saying, Vesamti Fidus, God says, I will make a separation while you are amongst the Egyptians. In truth, we today live amongst the Egyptians. And here I use the Egyptians as a metaphor for <clears throat> non positive, for negative influences or harmful influences or harmful influences for us, for you, maybe not for somebody else, based on who you are. And Hashem says here, Vesamti Fidus, meaning the following, coexist, coexists. You know, <clears throat> the Baal Shem Tov says, whatever comes our way, and again, I want to stress that I'm freezing, <laughs> but I'm getting a little, little warmer as we're studying the Torah over here. L'chaim, l'chaim. Most of you watching are in South Florida, so enjoy the, the weather. But... Um, <clears throat> Well, we're talking about coexist, and we're talking about separation. This is the way, um, from a Torah perspective, this is the way it has to it has to happen. Coexist does not mean what is happening to a large extent uh, to many of us, and I direct this primarily to to my fellow sort of Jews. Although the message is real and true. For, for all uh, um, <clears throat> people with their own history and their own tradition and, 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 and moral and ethical code and so on. Coexist does not mean that we each lose our identity. We lose who we are. <clears throat> That's, and it's not even healthy. It's not even healthy. You are who you are. Anything valuable, anything um, healthy has its borders. You're married. You have a border. You have to go ahead and respect the the love that needs to be just between husband and wife, not directed elsewhere. Uh, <clears throat> you have every relationship, every, uh, every night and day. Night has its border. Day has its border. Borders are very important to define who you are, to recognize who you are, if you do not, if you try to, um, uh, if you try to remove, if you try to um, uh, 
if you try to blend in where to something you are not, you will not be happy, you will not be productive, you will not utilize that which you are meant to utilize, you will not live your life according to your pur- purpose, your mission, and it just will not be wholesome, complete, and so on. So, the Samti Fidus, Hashem says, as we are developing as a people, there will be a separation. There needs to be a separation. Every individual has their own purpose. Every, every nation has their own purpose. And we, as the Israelites, as Jews, have been given a Torah that highlights and underscores and directs us and guides us and inspires us with such a sort of beautiful and, and uh, wealthy tradition um, and those borders cannot be obscured, cannot be washed away. That's not what coexist means. Let me tell you what coexist means. Coexist means that you coexist. I exist fully for who I am supposed to be and my purpose and my values and my traditions. And at the same time, I allow you here in the United States of America, that's part of what the founding of this country is about, which is a beautiful uh, concept that I allow you to exist fully as you are, as long as you're not hurting someone else. You're not being destructive to somebody else. So borders <clears throat> that define us, define our relationships, define what where something starts and where something ends, which is what morality is about. I cannot steal that which is yours. That which is yours does not belong to me. That doesn't only mean physical items. It means I cannot steal your right to exist. I cannot steal your right to have your own thoughts. I cannot steal your rights. When they conflict and they hurt, that's when we might have an issue. But in most cases, that's not the case. And therefore, the Torah says, Vesamti Fidus. We need to coexist. Coexist means we recognize, we respect each other, but at the same time, we fully embrace who we are. And that was the plague. At that point, unfortunately, the Egyptians needed to be smitten because of their behavior. The Jews did not. A border is set up. So going back sort of to the mall situation, (laughs) mall situation, you know, it's private property. They can do what they need to do. Um, <clears throat> in today's day and age, it's complicated. If a person wears sort of an offensive shirt, uh, do I think uh, that he should be thrown out? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I think sometimes people uh, left alone should be just left alone. You have an offensive shirt, you walk by, you uh, <clears throat> to But... You know, again, what happens if somebody wears a, a shirt uh, that's uh, that uh, that's immodest and so on? Uh, but I don't think it's the same. I think these are sort of ideas. It's not something that sort of hurts your eye or hurts your children's eyes. Idea: if a guy wants to, uh, he's not he's not preaching violence. I think they should have left him alone. I guess I am uh, saying my opinion over here. And uh, but you could disagree. It's not like I, you know, it's fine. It's a fine disagree. That's not the important part of this class. As we're warming up over here, the important part of this class is remember your borders. Teach your kinderlach your borders. Teach the values that we have. We do not have to blend in in that way. That's not who we are. It's not the beauty of who we are. It's not the beauty of this country. So let's value that. Uh, I think <clears throat> that suffices. Short class today. It's freezing cold. Everybody l'chaim. And uh, have a fantastic week. I welcome your feedback and any other comments you might have or ideas for future classes.